Another distinctively Catholic approach to the life of faith is the belief that God's revelation is not simply contained in the Bible, but also in our sacred traditions. On one level, this means that there are beliefs and practices that Catholics adhere to that are not explicitly stated in Scripture. So, for example, the baptism of infants is nowhere explicitly allowed in the Bible. Of course, for that matter, it's not explicitly disallowed either. Rather, it's a long-standing, indeed immemorial, practice of our tradition. Other practices, such as making the sign of the cross, or receiving ashes on Ash Wednesday, or addressing Mary as ever-virgin, or engaging in adoration of the Eucharist are not enjoined in Scripture, but neither are they forbidden, and they are very much central to our identity as Catholics. But tradition is more than a collection of extra-biblical beliefs and practices. Tradition comes from the Latin word traditio, meaning to hand on and encompasses everything that has been passed on to us, has been handed down to us from ages past. In this sense, tradition includes even scripture itself, since scripture is the written record of what has been handed on to us by the prophets and the apostles. And over time, through this process of handing on, a way of reading the scriptures has been built up. The depth of scripture has gradually been unveiled to us, and our understanding of all that lies implicitly in Scripture has grown. We Catholics see this as part of the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. Writing in 1994, the Pontifical Biblical Commission, the Vatican office that deals with questions arising concerning Holy Scripture, wrote, the Church, as the people of God, is aware that it is helped by the Holy Spirit in its understanding and interpretation of Scripture. The first disciples of Jesus knew that they did not have the capacity right away to understand the full reality of what they had received and all its aspects. As they persevered in their life as a community, they experienced an ever-deepening and progressive clarification of the revelation they had received. They recognized in this the influence and the action of the spirit of truth, which Christ had promised them to guide them to the fullness of the truth. Likewise, the church today journeys onward, sustained by the promise of Christ. The paraclete, the Holy Spirit, which the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will make you recall all that I have said to you. We sometimes think of tradition as inherently conservative, and it is uh, since, in a sense, since in handing on what we have received, we are indeed seeking to conserve it. But tradition is also, in another sense, progressive, since it is how what God has revealed to us moves forward in history. Tradition implies both faithful preservation of our heritage and change and adaptation of that heritage so that it can speak to new times and new situations. The historian Yaroslav Pelikan distinguishes between tradition and traditionalism, writing, tradition is the living faith of the dead. Traditionalism is the dead faith of the living. And I suppose I should add, it is traditionalism that gives tradition such a bad name. So the church calls us to embrace tradition without really falling into traditionalism.